PowerShell parameters, splatting and defaults. The kind of a weird couple of names for what turns out to be some really cool features that let you make your PowerShell code more readable and can even help save you time and make things more consistent as you use the shell. So I think splatting is one of the coolest feature names ever. I mean, how cool is it just to run around saying, hey, you want to splat that for me? But here's what it looks like. It's designed to give you a, a different way of passing parameters to a command. So line one here is the traditional way. I type the command name, I follow it with the parameter, and then that parameter's value. The next parameter and its value. The next parameter, its value, and so forth. And if you've got a lot of parameters, that can really stretch out on the screen. So splatting lets you do this in two separate steps. First, you create a variable that contains a hash table. A hash table is just key value pairs. And each pair is separated from the others by a semicolon. And because I ended the line in a semicolon, I can hit enter and put the next one on the next line, which gives me the ability to just kind of format this nice and pretty with each parameter on its own line. So key equals value. The key is the name of a parameter. So I've got class, I've got computer name, I've got filter, and I've got namespace. The value that they're set equal to is whatever value you would normally pass that parameter. So you can see I've pulled in the same values, Win32 service, local host, state equals running, and root backslash CIMV2. To run the command, you then just put the command, an at sign, and the variable name, which does not include the dollar sign here. This is actually splatting the variable. So if I run just this line, let's just run the selection, there's the results I get. Now let's run this version of it. Exact same results. Just a different way of passing in those parameters. Now you can still add other parameters to this. So if I, uh, let's just comment this out so I don't accidentally run it again. That way I can just hit this. Still works fine. So you can have sort of a base set of parameters that you use over and over and over and over with many different commands and then you can also add per command parameters to kind of customize how things work. Now closely related to this is the concept of setting parameter defaults, which is a new feature in PowerShell version three. So all of this is contained in a variable called PS default parameter values. You can see it's empty by default. To fill it, one way to do so, I'm just gonna paste this in. I, oh, I'll actually show you the help file where I got this. It's a uh, help about parameters default star. That'll get you here. But here's the basic syntax. What you do is you fill in a commandlet name, such as get wmy object. That can also contain wildcards. So you can do this for multiple commands at once. Then you're gonna set the parameter name whose default value you wanna specify. I'm gonna use computer name. And then you give it the default value. And since computer name accepts a string, I'm just gonna give it a string, localhost. So now we can take a look at that variable and see that it has get WMI objects computer name parameter set to a default value of localhost. You can always override that, right? If I do get WMI object class win32 BIOS, it's gonna run against localhost anyway. Computer name, I can give it whatever I want to. Now it's gonna time out because I gave it the name of a computer that's not online. So that proves you can override the default. This just creates a default. What about if you wanna add another one? Because see, what I did up top there is I created a, a brand new set for that. So adding one once you have a set established is also pretty easy. Just use the add method, get WMI object, and let's modify the class parameter this time and set it equal to win32 BIOS. Whoops, we messed up because I put an equal sign and it has to be a comma. There we go. So let's now look at PS default values again. So we've got two in there now. Now if I just run get WMI object, it always queries the BIOS unless I override it. Now, I'm not saying that that's a perfect example of when you would want to establish defaults, but the point is you can. And keep in mind that PowerShell has a system of scope. So if you do all of this default parameter value definition in a script, then it will only take effect 
for that script. So you can do this at the beginning of a script to set up a bunch of default values that you want to be valid throughout that entire script. Like let's say somebody specifies a computer name, you're gonna run several different operations and you want all of those to run against that computer name. So your script might wind up looking something like this. You're gonna have a param block where they get to specify a computer name and then the first line of your script might be ps default parameter values equals all commandlets computer name equals, oops, that has to be a hash table. Forgot my little at sign curly bracket, equals computer name. So now within this script, every parameter will be given a default value of whatever this parameter was for their computer name. So I don't have to specify it on a per command basis anymore. Pretty neat little trick. Keep in mind that's a new feature in version three. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.